I'd like to uh, let the audience know that if you're here for, uh, for one of the cases, we have to have seven people on the board here. There is a delay on I-10. I got caught up on it coming from the east side and it gets pretty bad. So we're gonna delay for a little bit until we have our seven board members, okay? Good news, <laughs> we have quorum. So, yeah, we all, y'all guys bust in together, huh? Zoning Board of Adjustment is now in session at 1.32 p.m. Um, in order to ensure that we have quorum, we have seven of our board members here. Uh, eight, actually, at this point, I think it is. So we're in good shape. Um, gonna ask that everybody put your phones on uh, vibrate, okay? Don't let them go off, and that includes me. And I'm gonna ask that staff read the opening statement. The Zoning Board of Adjustment of the City of El Paso is now in session for Monday, March 6th, 2023. This board is established under Article 211.008 of the Texas Local Government Code and Chapter 2.16 of the El Paso Municipal Code. <clears throat> In appropriate cases and subject to appropriate conditions and safeguards, this board is empowered to make special exceptions or grant variances to the terms of the zoning ordinance that are consistent with the general purpose and intent of the ordinance and in accordance with any ap applicable rules contained in the ordinance. Your application will be decided only after you have had the opportunity to present evidence before the board for its consideration. Other parties interested in your case may also be heard at this time. No consultation among board members has been held in advance regarding your case. This board does not act in an arbitrary manner. You may feel that this application of the zoning ordinance or smart code your situation will result in hardship to you but this does not mean that the board has the power to grant you relief unless the facts of your case are such that the board must act on them. You may be sure full consideration will be given to your case and following this hearing, you will be promptly notified of the board's decision. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody that's going to be giving testimony today, if you have a case coming up before us and you are here present, please stand at this time. I'm gonna ask you to swear the truth put your right hand up if you would do you promise to tell the truth nothing but the truth excellent thank you those of you that are online if you are going to give testimony today um, same applies to you all so at this point um, I want to ask staff are there any changes to the agenda good afternoon everyone with some more with planning inspections there are no changes at this point all right thank you very good appreciate it also Let's go ahead and um, introduce ourselves. Let's start off with our friends over on the right from the city. Joel Muñiz with uh, Planning and Inspections. Joyce Garcia, Assistant City Attorney. Luis Zamora with Planning and Inspections. Hi, Adrian Morales, District 2. Janet Fortune, District 8. Don Luciano. Linda Troncoso. Ray Adalto. Isaac Rodriguez. Fabian Uribe. Lewis Edwards. 
Andrew Salon with planning inspections. Thanks, Andrew. Saul Pina with planning and inspections. Nina Rodriguez, planning and inspections. Thank you, Nina. We have two visitors also from the city in the back over there. Would you introduce yourselves? <laughs> Thank you, Raul. Good afternoon, Kevin Smith with Planning Inspections. Thank you, Kevin, appreciate it. All right, everybody checked in. Donna is over on, on the desk. So we're good. Steph, uh, let's go ahead and go to item number one, zero, zero, 00100. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. Uh, this is Saul Pina with Planning and Inspections. Item one on the agenda. If you are online, please put your um, microphone on mute. We're hearing you. Please put it on mute. Thank you. We'll call you when your case is up. Item one on the agenda is a special exception request for the property located at 11548 uh, James Grand Drive. The applicant is seeking special exception C to permit the construction of a proposed single family residential addition extending into the required uh, rear yard setback. This case was previously heard on February 20th, 2023. Here's an aerial image of the subject property highlighted in yellow. Here we have the zoning map. The zoning district for the property is R3 residential. Here we see the site plan depicting the layout of the property. The applicant is proposing to construct a 1,980 square foot home addition for which a portion extends eight feet into the required 23 foot rear yard setback. The proposed home addition will be two stories tall and will have a maximum height of 19 feet. If approved, a 170 square foot encroachment into the required 23 foot rear yard setback would be permitted on the property. Here's the front view of the subject property as seen from a James Grant Drive. Here we have an image of the 170 square foot encroachment extending a feet into the required 23 foot rear yard setback. Here we see a full rear view of the proposed addition. And lastly, uh, here is an aerial image or an overall view of the proposed 1,980 square foot home addition with a 170 square foot rear encroachment shown on red. Notices were mailed on February 9th of the present year and the planning division received one email in opposition to the request. And with that, staff recommends approval of the exception request as the requested encroachment of 170 square feet is less than the maximum permitted encroachment of 263 square feet. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Uh, what was in the email? So in the email, uh, there was a neighbor uh, that was concerned about uh, the operation, uh, the operations that, that were going on at, the, at this uh, specific property. I attached photos. Um, on this staff report, and I also included photos on this presentation for the board to see. But eventually, the main concern of this neighbor was uh, that they were giving a, a, a commercial use to this residential property. Just to make sure, this was the same uh, individual who approached this last time, right? That is correct. The Mr. Only, Dorman, McDorman? Yes, the only thing that changed here and that, you, that the board may see is that I included photos, the photos that this individual uh, presented. Okay. So board, if you look at page eight and nine on your paperwork, 10 as well, page 10 and 11. This is a residential property, right? That is correct. Is the owner here? Charlie Navarre. Yeah. 
Okay. Hello, hello, Boyd. I'm sorry for interrupting. I am also here on the telephone. Is that Charlie? Okay, good. All right. Um, if you'd like to show those, pass them around. Start over here on this side, if you would. I'm sorry, was that directed to me? I couldn't hear it. Yeah, we're looking at the photos right now, Mr. Navar. We'll call you in just a second. Have you seen the photos? Yes, uh, these photos pretty much show um, the commercial uh, establishment operating outside residential. Uh, I have here uh, the property owner in case uh, she, uh, you, in case the board needs more an answers pertaining to these photos. Mr. Navarre, after looking at the photos, where are the trailers parked? Right now, they are uh, currently parked. We have a location at 1327 George Dieter. It's the Las Palmas Marketplace at the intersection of George Dieter and Zaragoza. We've been there for 12 years, and we stay, we park our trailers there in a shared parking lot between Lowe's, Kohl's, myself, Five Guys, and other uh, commercial shops. That's at Las Palmas? So in the previous pictures that we saw, we are seeing uh, substantial commercial activity in front of the house in the pictures that are in our, fo in our pr um, presentation. Um, are you saying they're not there anymore? Not gonna be there? They're not, they, um, I honestly don't know when the- Correct, pictures. so we- Sorry about Hang that. on, Charlie. Okay. Hang on, your wife is here. <laughs> I don't- Okay, go ahead. Um, I don't recall when they took the pictures or, um, thank you, sir. Um, but yeah, they're no longer there. And I mean, they, they actually don't, we don't park them there. Um, like I said, I took those pictures, those, these pictures are current and, um, and we use the commercial, uh, you know, the store to, to have them parked there. Did you move everything that was in the backyard because that's no, a mess? No, we haven't, that's, that's what the expansion is, is to, to create a storage. For, for the staff. Can't have commercial storage in a residential area. So I'm going to I'm going to defer to the to the city attorney. When were these uh, pictures taken? The ones? Did you take them? Okay. The pictures. The, the the ones on the no the ones in, the ones in the package here. No. Those photos were the ones that were not included on the previous staff reports on the previous. So year. from February 20th. Yes. But, but you took them or that other gentleman took them? The individual who submitted the, the email Mr. Uh, took McDormand. those photos. So these are pretty recent. Yeah. Okay. City attorney, we have an issue here where the proposal, according to the applicant, is for commercial storage. Can't have commercial storage in a residential. No, not yet. I have a comment if I can. No, not yet. Can you clarify your question? Yes. yes. Why, are, why are we listening to a zoning change when we're looking at an admitted, an admitted uh, violation of storage of commercial property on a residential area? That for me? That's exactly why I'm asking it. We're not changing the zoning when we're just simply allowing the construction of a, of a building that is going to be used to store what we're seeing in these photos. So, Mr. Sheriff, if I may, I'll just chime in for our attorney here. 
Um, so we are obviously, we are here to consider a special exception for an encroachment, proposed encroachment. Um, along with this, uh, and as part of the staff report, uh, we received obviously an email with a complaint from a neighbor. Uh, again, as you know, complaining about the situation that they have, the uh, illegal uh, storage, uh, commercial storage in the property. Um, at this point, that's not something we're gonna be reviewing. Uh, I am aware that there's a case, uh, a case, a code enforcement case for the property where the city is requiring the owner to comply with the requirements. We obviously, uh, as you mentioned, this is a, basically a, a illegal use of the property. It's not allowed. Um, but right now we're here just to consider the, the encroachment, the proposed encroachment. Um, and sometime in the future, uh, the property owner has to comply with the zoning uh, requirements, uh, which is basically not, not using the property as commercial storage, which is again what the, uh, the neighbor, uh, neighbor has complained about. Still, I, I, I feel like I'm not getting the answer I'm looking for. So why are we trying to legalize something that will be used for something that's not allowed? So we are not sure, and I guess that's probably something for the owner to, to answer about, but we're not sure that this addition to the house is gonna be used for that. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, prior to this meeting, uh, my husband did say that um, those, uh, that's the commercial stuff, it's, it's not ours. Um, we're, we lend the space to a friend of ours um, because they're not, um, because they're not ours, we are asking um, this friend of ours to, to remove it, so we are working and um, clearing the space, but um, it's the storage, it's not for commercial, sir. Um. If I may answer your question, Chairman Alonso. Um, so this special exception is for the year, a rear yard setback. And um, although it, it's very specific as to how you can, you can, um, how you qualify for that exception, um, any, exceptions that you authorize have to be in harmony with the spirit and purposes of Title II and Title 20. That's per the city code. So um, regarding uses, that is in Title 20. Does that answer your question? No, okay. it just tells so, me where to find it. So you, you have to, any, uh, action that you take cannot be contrary to what is in Title 20 and Title 2. That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. So how can we approve something that would be in violation? You um, can decide either to grant it or to deny it. Um, that is your in your jurisdiction. Thank you. So can you pull up the aerial photo again, showing an aerial view of the, the residence with the other houses? This one right here? Yeah, that'll do. I mean, my issue, I think with Ray, this is a pretty nice neighborhood. And it looks to me like they've been abusing it and they're trying to clear it up. But I have a problem of, my problem is allowing them to e even get closer to any of the neighbor houses with any kind of commercial or storage facility. I understand the yellows can be approved without us, but I, I don't even really think we should give them the 170 first creep because it's just closer to the back house. If I might, Mr. Chair, um, Kevin Smith with Planning Inspections. So along with what um, Ms. Garcia mentioned about the, uh, the evaluation of special exceptions having been in harmony of titles two and 20, one of the other criteria is, um, you know, I'll just read them. This is from uh, Title II, uh, Section 16.050 regarding special exceptions. The um, harmony with Titles 2 and 20 is, is number one. 
Number two is the public convenience and welfare will be substantially served, which is number two. Number three is the use of neighboring property will not be substantially injured, which is number three. And number four, include any conditions and safeguards which the board deems appropriate. So that is also an option as well. So if there are conditions that the board would like to consider, that is also an option. Um, so approval, approval with conditions or, or denial. Thank you, Kevin, Request. appreciate that. Yes, that's correct, just confirming. You're confirming everything. The city attorney's confirming, good for you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Charlie, you had something to say, Mr. Navar? Yes, sir, um, thank you guys so much for your time and consideration. I think there's a little bit of confusion. That shipping container was dropped there because when I moved out of my previous house, that had all of my personal items, beds, mattresses, uh, family memories, old stoves uh, that are antique stoves that were uh, from my parents who were passed away. So that shipping container is not used as a commercial storage. And what we want to add is not going to be commercially used. It's actually because I already own the shipping containers. Why we plan to build with them. It's just building material. But once again, we're not going to use it commercially. And if you guys help us approve, it's basically just to help organize and clean up our personal items, bicycles, and anything else that's left behind. And, and again, not to be used commercially, we have our commercial storefronts. One is Craze on the east side, and we also have another one in Fort Bliss that's in a shopping center where we neighbor Starbucks, Popeye's Chicken, Domino's, and we have our facilities for our commercial prep. Um, so that's not where we do it. That's just our home. That's just our home, and we're trying to clean it up, organize it. This is step one to make it a more beautiful place and you know we're just trying to do the best we can with all by doing things correctly that's why we're here with you guys instead of building and asking for for forgiveness we're asking for permission as well as the case that's with the dmz i've been working closely with mr david soto um to to let him know what's going on and where we are with our architectural process and then after this it's engineering so we're going to be following the rules 110 percent we're we're there to be good neighbors we're there to be good citizens um and do our, do our best possible so guarantee we won't be in any violations of any codes i mean we have people we've had the police come by we've had code enforcement come by excuse me hello okay if you are not charlie navar please put your phone on mute we are talking to him by himself We'll call you when we're ready. Sorry, Mr. Navarro. No, no problem. Violations of any code. Again, here we are. We've got, there you go. Thank you for muting them. It's frustrating on this end. Go ahead. Sorry, y'all. Um, so just to let y'all know, we're going to be 100, 110% in, in good standing with everybody and not a single nail will go in that doesn't get inspected, that doesn't get checked by the city. And at the end, 100%, it's not for commercials, it's just for our own use and to make things nice. And I like to do, I have like a little go-kart that I'm working on and to put our stuff away, but not commercial stuff. We have our own locations for that. Okay. And that's all I have to say. I'll Thank you, Mr. Navarro. All right. Um, do we have anybody online or, or here that is um, looking to say something about this particular case. Please raise your hand if you're online and we'll look at uh, getting you in one time at a, one at a time. Once again, star six in order to unmute yourself if you are online and you want to say something about this case. Star six, one more time. All right. I have a question. Sure. So the, the amount that you're built, adding on, it's all storage? Um, are you there, Charlie? Okay. Okay. No, it's what, what, not all storage, ma'am. What are it's, you building? Um, it's, I mean, it's basically, oh, I think he's there. Okay, Charlie. I'm sorry, I muted myself. So. The amount that 
that you're built adding on into all the storage. Go ahead. So the question one, I'm saying, is that directed to me? Yes. Okay. To ownership. Once again, uh, uh, what is it that you're building is basically the question. What was the question? I'm sorry, y'all. What is it that you're building? Why are you building this? Why are you asking to build this? What is it that we're building? Yes. Oh, yes. So we're, we're basically building a covered porch type of area with a storage on the side. We are using shipping containers to build, um, obviously per city code, whatever they would allow us to do. But that's because I already have that those things. Because I used to own a place called Ricky's Paintball. And that's also where my house is at. When we closed up, I bought the shipping containers to store my house and, and my tools and things that I had uh, personally. So that's what I'm trying to do is use that as the building material. So it looks like it's storage, 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 but it, the lower one is just going to be our storage as you see it moved over uh, per the regulations and code for architectural plans and engineering plans. And the rest is going to be like a covered shaded area. So if we, I can tinker on my, my little electric go-kart or tinker on my little uh, dirt bike and have a space to work in the shade. So you're planning on keeping the container there? Yes, sir. The container is planned to be there. That's why it's actually been there so long. The architect plans are using the shipping container as a part of, of the building. And when did you put that container there? The container was put in there about three years ago when I moved into the place because that had all my house stuff in it. And it still has old house stuff in it or memories from my parents, but um, it was for personal items. So to confirm, it is going to be covered area and storage, the whole, everything that you're adding on, is that correct? I'm sorry, ma'am, can you say that one more time? It's a little bit hard to hear. Everything that you're adding on is going to be for storage or a covered area for you to work outside or enjoy your hobbies outside, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. It's just going to be storage. There will be no modifications made to the shipping container. It's just as is. But, of course, we want to paint it to, to mask the house and make it look beautiful, uh, maybe do some siding, again, to make it look nice, but nothing nothing i guess that won't be in the architect plans and approved by the city so yes ma'am, it's just the storage of our personal items and then a shaded area thank you mr navar all right uh, not having heard from anybody online uh, is there anybody in here that would like to say anything about this case not seeing anybody we're going to move forward we have a recommendation from city staff to approve do I hear a motion? I hear, I make a motion to deny the extra square footage. Motion made to deny the extra square footage, in other words, to deny what we're looking at. The red, what's shaded in red. Okay. Do I have a second on that? Failure to hear a second. I'll second. Okay. We do have a second on that. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, go ahead. We have to vote on it, right? Yeah, we will after the discussion, if you have any discussion on it, okay. Uh, okay, so I have questions. Okay. So, um, so do we look at the picture, the, the, pro, the, the question of that red, that footage, or do, we look at that broader scope of things of if, for the neighborhood and I mean really what they're asking for is in the parameters obviously that they are recommending to approve it but what um, I, don't, I can't even form it in a sentence <laughs> I understand Mrs. Navarre I think my issue is you're gonna have to move the container a little bit before you remodel okay. and okay. my opinion is it looks like we're trying to grant something so you don't have to move the, ret the container so much. I believe three years ago that should have been taken into consideration when you put the container there and not for us to come in and correct the 170 square feet. 
Right. So that's why I'm having a hard time. And then you weren't here last time, but we had some complaints from people if you all park in trucks in the street and everything else. I was. So those was are very here. concerning to me. Were you here? Yes, sir. I was okay. here. Yeah. So I understand you're cleaning it up. That's my issue that I don't, and especially what your husband said, I don't see where this extra 170 square feet, which is nothing, is going to make a big difference for what you're trying to store. If I may also, I can assure you that the, the stuff that is not ours, the commercial stuff, we will uh, remove it by this week. Mr. Luciano, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I just wanted to clarify whether Mr. Luciano is amending his motion. Right. Okay. As I understand it, the 170 square foot encroachment. Can I say something? Not yet. Uh, yes. Is where we are, what we are discussing at this point, and it's actually the red area in the pl plat plan, the site plan. So that would probably knock off that whole um, rectangle, right. right? Which is not just 170 square feet, but truly the the whole area of that of that red area, all inclusive in that. In other words, nothing beyond what is uh, already there. It looks like there's uh, stairs. If I can see this correctly. And, and uh, so you can, if you'll bring back that, uh, that site plan, back up online. I, th I think what, what we're talking about is n not allowing anything past the, the dotted line. And that's, that's an issue because then it's not conforming to the architectural site plan. So to clarify, your then your the motion was to deny the application for special exception C. Yes, that okay. would be that would be as my understanding. Okay. You can always come back uh, with a with a new site plan um, to apply again if the motion passes. So we're in discussion on that motion. Okay. Board, anything else? I will ask for a vote. Um, to the motion that uh, Mr. Luciano made to deny. And I'm going to ask everybody to raise their hand just to make sure we got clearance. Um, if you are voting in favor of denying, please raise your hand at this time. Okay. That did not pass. So we are on our regular motion again. I will entertain a motion. I'll Based make a motion on, to approve. Okay, on the condition set forth by staff. Yes, in accordance with staff recommendations. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. We have a first and a second. All in favor, same okay, thing. Can we, can we discuss it? Can we discuss that? I think we've already discussed it, Janet. No, it's a, di it's a different one. Um, we are now discussing if we should pass it. And I. I okay, there, go ahead. He, you mentioned there were some things that we could add to it. Is Before, there. Um, yeah, if you wanted to add additional exceptions. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of thinking that I would like to discuss that. Okay. So okay. again, Kevin Smith with Planning Inspections, the, the way the code reads under Section 2.16.050 of the City Code, number four, include any conditions and safeguards which the board deems appropriate. And it gives some examples, such as, but not limited to, site arrangement, landscaping, and hours of operation. Obviously, where appropriate, but that's what the code Identifies. Okay. Chairman Alalto, if I may clarify. And sure. also that motion, there's um, no specific stated condition that you all stated for the record that you would like to add. So uh, um, if you could clarify that when you vote on Linda, will you allow any modifications to your motion? We'll talk about them. Okay, so <laughs> if there's something to modify, we'll, we'll can we go ahead and withdraw your your motion at this point so that we can move forward on a discussion? What the motion? Your discussion. Can, the motion can still stand. We are. Can't we just follow through with? I was just trying to be. It? I was trying to be uh, cognizant of. I got you. Well, okay. I'm in with her if she if she modified to include some. So. <laughs> I'll withdraw my motion if that makes it easier because I, I'm not going to say I'm going to modify it when I don't know what we're modifying it to. You good with that? Yeah, that's fine. All uh, right. I think, if I may, um, 
So it needs to be used for residential storage for it to be compliant, correct? I mean, I know it's storage. It's essentially an extra garage, if you want to look at it, built out of containers with the ports on top. And I think the concern everybody has here is that it seems like it is going to be used for commercial storage. Um, but we've been assured that it's going to be used for personal storage. I don't know how the city goes about making sure that people are using their storage for residential use and not commercial, and exactly how do we distinct from it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, how does code enforcement go in there to check that? Um, I think what they're asking for us to do is to essentially add the condition that it's used for residential storage, but isn't that already in the code? So Luis Zamora with planning and inspections. So yes, you are correct. So uh, as mentioned before, uh, commercial storage is not a, a, a use allowed in the area. Domestic storage is an accessory use that's allowed obviously for, for residences. So it, it is obviously implied that they want to use it uh, as storage, they can only use it for domestic storage, not commercial, because it's not allowed per, per the zoning. So it's never going to be allowed to continue. If they, they want to use it as that, as commercial storage, which is what seems to have been happening, uh, then code enforcement will go and, and cite them and have them comply with. And, and frankly, that's not in our purview, right? right? So we're voting simply to either accept or not the proposal for a zoning amendment. And you can, uh, Mr. Chairman, you yeah. can add conditions to it. So okay. the, currently the um, recommendation of staff is to approve. It doesn't include any conditions, but you all have the authority to include conditions. Okay. Uh, um, as Mr. Um, Kevin from... Mr. Smith from PNI um, mentioned you can include any conditions and safeguards which the board deems appropriate. And you also have to um, consider Title II and Title 20 permissible uses. Okay. Probably the most complicated discussion that we've had since I've been here, which is good. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what we're here for, right? So that it, we have uh, a fair as assessment both for the owner as well as the neighbors and the city. So I'm pleased with that. I think everybody should be pleased with that. Um, does that clarify anything for you guys, or does it complicate it, or do you are you willing to make another motion? Yes, sir. Uh, two questions for the homeowner. Uh, within the 170 square feet encroachment, is that going to be the two-story portion, and will that be? The second question is: If so, are you stacking two shipping containers on top of each other, or how? How is the double height uh, construction? Um, I think Charlie will be the best uh, to answer these questions. I do. He, he's he's the one with the, with the um, ideas. Ideas, yes, sir. Yes. Charlie, you're back. Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you can you say the question again? So just uh, just focusing on the 170 square foot encroachment uh, area, um, is that going to be where the two story in the description of two story seven? feet high construction will be and if so um, will there will there be what's going on top of the ship container in terms of construction yeah I think it's because we don't have an elevation showing what the plan is and I'm a little bit confused because it was mentioned about a covered patio but I'm not yeah. sure what portion of that construction is good point Yes, I'm, I was still a little bit unclear, but uh, I could definitely explain a little bit more. I think you kind of answered part of the question earlier, the reason why we're requesting 170, because the, the containers are modular, so we can't adjust it by literally four feet, which would which would allow us to build within the, the original setback. Um, so it's actually at the far right corner, we're not even passing the setback at all, just on the left side, so it kind of goes at an angle and it's a portion of the lower container, which is the, the support structure, and then a small portion of the upper container that passes the setback, but it's not even not even a quarter of the container that will actually be passing. The setback is just how they're built, and because we're using that is why we're passing and, and asking for permission to, to build, to build and, and not right, build but, first and then. 
the, the, the request is for a, a two-story addition. My question is the two-story addition uh, part of the 170-foot encroachment. Was that directed to me? I'm sorry. Yes, yes Charlie. Are you putting the two container units on top of each other at that end point? Is that what you're doing? Yes, sir, that is correct. We're putting the a set of shipping containers on top, which is creating the shade on the bottom. And that's primarily for the, for the shaded section. And then the bottom container will be the storage for our personal items. Okay, thank you. Did that answer? Well, Thank there you. was mention about a patio, but I, I'm not sure where that falls into the, the scheme of things. Is that within the 170 feet? And you're talking about shaded area. I, I'm a little bit confused. Are, are you putting a, a shipping container on posts or, or what? Charlie, that's to you. I'm sorry, it, it gets foggy. Can you say that again? There's mention of a, of a patio, and uh, and you're going to work underneath the shipping container. Are you? I'm a little confused. Are you? You say you're stacking two shipping containers, or are you putting a shipping container on posts and having a unconditioned covered area within the 170 foot encroachment? Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it completely, but I heard that the left side of the shipping container, the one that's there, will be the base with other shipping containers stacked on top to create the, the shape and, and the building, but it's also primarily for storage on the far right side will be post, but of course, not passing the five foot set back to the neighbor so we won't be encroaching at all towards, towards the right side, towards the neighbor side. Okay, and on the site plan, there seems to depict stairs. Is that gonna service one of the shipping containers, or is it going to be service in the shipping container that's part of the encroachment, or both? You're asking if the shipping container is going to be part of the encroachment? Yes. Just at the rear, only by about four or five feet. Is that shown on, on the, the site side. plan? Yes, it is shown in the site plan. Anything else? Okay. So I'm going to ask for uh, an, um, an approval. Um, if there's any additions to it, you need to include it in your motion that you'll make. So, uh, board, go ahead, Janet. I make the motion that we um, look into if there, um, what were they called? The, um, we could add some things, caveats to it. Mm -hmm. I lost the term, but to discuss conditions. if there's any conditions. Thank you. If there's any, okay, I make the motion that we look at adding some conditions so we can approve. But we can't do it without knowing what those conditions right. are. So I, my motion is to discuss adding conditions. Is there are there any suggestions of? So it's not even a, to protect. So it's not even a motion at this point. You're asking to, to discuss discussions. Yeah. Okay. So if any conditions that you all feel necessary for this? I think just limiting the encroachment to one story uh, was a necessary condition. Okay. Anybody else? Um, as long as it's residential, I'm good with it. Okay, with the motion or the condition? No, I, I agree with his motion of having a two-story back there, but that may be an issue that he needs to do. And if, if it doesn't seem like we had an objection from the guy in the back. I don't really have a problem with that. Okay. Anybody else? If, if I might, Mr. Chair. Um, again, just want to remind the board there are two semi-separate items that we're, we're talking about. Obviously, one is uh, permitting the construction of these two shipping containers in, in the rear of the property. The other is the use or the storage of materials there. The materials, that's something that our code enforcement team can, can look at and, and uh, enforce upon themselves. But looking at it, is, is the construction appropriate? Again, there's, they're proposing two separate, two shipping containers, sounds like, on top of each other. One of the options, like Mr. Edwards said, would be to potentially decrease that to one. Um, one shipping container, which would bring down the height to 
I would guess roughly eight and a half, nine feet. Um, in addition, the request is, and that's on the staff report, this is a residential addition. So again, they are asking for this. If it's used for something else other than residential, that's where our code enforcement team would step in and take appropriate enforcement action. Okay, so Mr. Edwards, your um, motion is to approve based with the condition that it only be one story, not two. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, do I hear a second to that? Okay, <clears throat> I don't think we ever voted on her motion in my second. Oh, you withdrew? withdrew? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once again, I need a second for the motion that Mr. Edwards made, which is to approve, but with a condition that it only be one story, not two. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Again, by vote, in favor of the motion set forth, which is to approve with the condition of it being one story only. Please vote with your right hand. All in favor? Those opposed? Okay, we had uh, a five, a six to two. There's eight of us here. 62 approving the motion as entered. So that motion is to approve the, to prove it with the condition that it only be one story. So now you have to go back and, uh, and redesign this thing. But at this point, that motion carries. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, the motion is that for the one story, is that for the whole structure or just what? Just for the addition on the back. Just for the encroachment? Right. Staff clear? Yeah, we're good. City Attorney, we good? Yes. Okay, for the record, thank you very much. All right, let's go to item number two. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Did you, did you have a question for me, I'm sorry? Item number two is a portion of lot 1617, block four, Golden Hill, PZBA 822-0101. Good afternoon, commissioners or board. Uh, Andrew Salone with Planning Inspections. Item number two on the agenda is a request for a special exception B for property located at 1635 Ramport Place. Special exception B request is to legalize the existing single family dwelling and uh, also permit the proposed addition to the single family dwelling which will encroach in the R5 zone district. The subject property is located north of Arizona Avenue and west of Cliff Drive. The property is shown on the aerial. Again, the property is located in the R5 zone district. The site plan does depict the, exist, the layout of the existing property and the encroachment of the home and the proposed addition in the rear yard setback, and uh, which is highlighted in red. The structure will extend 30 feet into the required 35 feet of the rear setback and consists of 1,182.28 square feet. This is a single family structure. The applicant is also requesting approval the special, uh, special exception to permit the construction of proposed addition of total of 538 0.87 square feet, of which 487.62 square feet will encroach into the 30 feet rear yard, um, the required 35 feet rear yard setback. Also, the 15 square feet will encroach two feet into the required five feet side yard setback. This is subject property, a view from Ramport Place. Uh, in this photo, it does show the encroaching home, which is situated in the rear, and it's also highlighted in red. Also, the proposed addition 
that is situated in the rear and side yard setback, also highlighted in red. This is aerial showing that, uh, that there are at least five other subject property or properties within the same lot, in the same block. That contain structures also located in the rear yard and also within 30 feet of the respective um, side yards, or rear yard setbacks in, that are encroaching on the side yards and also within five feet of the side yard setbacks. And this is all on the, the same block of Ramport Place. Based on the aerial, on the rear and side yard encroachments, these are the same configurations, the same block. There's no communication support or opposition from the public. Uh, we did receive one phone call of inquiry. Staff does recommend approval of the special exception request as the requested encroachments are equal to the encroachments then to the setback that already present at at least two other neighboring properties. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Nurse. Well, appreciate that. Let me understand correctly, is this um, location up by the old El Paso Tech? Is that up, up the street or near that Where area? The two dips are on Arizona Street. On Arizona Street, yeah, ah, Rampart. okay. Right there. Rampart. It's below Pill Hill. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I had asked Linda if we were on Pill Hill, then I got totally confused with this aerial. Uh, any questions for staff, board? Uh, yes, what is the, the alley, or is that a, in between, in the rear, or true west? Is that an alley, or is that a ditch? There's, um, let me see, there is no um, alley. It's a, a rock wall, it's very high, and it's abutting the other properties. It's a retaining wall. Yeah. Right, but on the, on the zoning map, there's this, uh, a long skinny line, uh, and it's kind of shown in the aerial of what seems to be. Yeah, if you look at uh, where the circle is on this one, um, there, there is an alley between Cliff and Rampart, but the property over on the other side is a retaining wall. I know exactly where it is, and you can't have an alley back there. It wasn't, wasn't right, built right. into it. There, it cannot have the alley. Does that help? Uh, it could be an easement. Okay. Yes, that helps. Okay, awesome. Can you go back to the picture of the arrow where, or to that picture where you're showing the retaining wall, please? Just to make sure that we feel comfortable with it. IT, can you please bring up the presentation? Lewis, all these houses are built right up against that back. Yeah. Uh, where that's Golden Terrace above it, and the others are right below it. IT, can college. you go ahead and pull up uh, the pictures from the presentation once again. And let's go to next picture. Right, right there. there. Thank you. Yeah, Golden Hill is above it where you see the bushes. There's right. there's a house that overlooks this house. Yeah. Right. Arizona and Central it was really you got a lot of commercial ups up above that in that mostly Pill Hill is what we call it, medical centers, hospitals, that kind of stuff. So, all right. Anything else, staff? For the staff, excuse me. No? Cool. Is the representative or the owner in, um, in the audience or online? Denise Gomez or Representative Alberto Bujaya? One more time, if you are on, on the Zoom call or Teams call, 
star six to unmute yourself. Star six. Denise Gomez Alberto Bujaya. Not having heard a response from that. Hello? Go ahead. Are you able to hear me? We are now. Who is this? Uh, this is Denise Gomez. I'm the owner of the property. Thank you, Denise. Any questions for, for Ms. Gomez on what she's trying to do here? No. Ms. Gomez, do you have any questions for us? Um, no, not at the moment. Just to confirm, it is uh, the properties are above um, the rampart, so it's not the neighbors. That's actually just a retaining wall. Correct. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. All right. Thank you very much. You can go ahead and put yourself back on mute if you'd like. So, board, I entertain a motion to approve based upon the recommendations of staff. I make a motion to approve. We have a first. Need a second. I'll second. Thank you, Isaac. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any not in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Denise. And thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Item number three, zero, 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 five, four thousand four Santa Anita. Oh, I know where that is. Very good. I have a daughter that lives on that street, so right up up there. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. Uh, this is Saul Pina again with Planning and Inspections. Item three on the agenda are two special exception requests for the property located at uh, 404 Santa Anita Drive. Uh, the applicant is requesting a special exception K to legalize an attached porch encroaching into the required uh, rear yard setback and special exception L to permit the construction of a proposed home, ad home addition extending into the required front yard setback. Here is yeah, another no image. Okay, yeah, somebody has their phone unmuted. Please mute once again. Thank you. Here Go we ahead. see an aerial image of the subject property highlighted in yellow. Here we have the zoning map. The zoning district for the property is R3 residential. Here we see the site plan depicting the layout of the property. The applicant is proposing to construct a 263 square foot home addition for which 57 square feet extends four feet into the required 28 foot front yard setback. The applicant Next. also wants to legalize a 139 square foot attached porch for which 132 square feet encroach into the required 22 foot rear yard setback. If approved, an encroachment totaling 189 square feet would be permitted on the property. Here is a 2008 aerial view of the subject property showing the attached porch in its current configuration. Here we have the front view of the subject property as seen from a Santa Anita drive. Here we see a side view of the proposed addition uh, shown in red is the 57.68 square foot encroachment. And here is a full view of the proposed addition with the encroachment uh, shown on red. Here we have a view of the attached porch or glazed patio structure shown in red is the 132 square foot encroachment. And here we see one last view of the attached porch or glazed patio structure. Notices were mailed on February 24th of the present year and the planning division did not receive any communications in support or opposition to the special exception requests. And with that, the staff recommends approval of the two special exception requests as the requested width of encroachment of 14.42 square feet is less than the maximum permitted width of 36.18 square feet for the proposed addition and the requested encroachment for the attached porch 
or grace powder structure has been in existence for 15 Four years or more. This concludes my presentation. Report. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions for staff? Mr. Chairman, if um, I may advise something quickly, um, just in general to the board, if anybody has any bias against or for this that they abstain from voting? Well put, okay. So if you are biased, does it well, mean I, you? I brought it up with him. I own the property across the street. Okay, so you're but going I'm to abstain. I'm not biased or whatever. No. No. But I wanted to let him know I do own the house on O'Keefe in the corner there. Oh, okay. Cool. Pretty house. Huh? Pretty house. It's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So having cleared that hurdle, um, like I say, I know where it is too, but I don't, I don't know this property exactly. So I have no bias. Yes, sir. Uh, can we put the site plan on the screen? Sure. There are two rear lines in the back that it's kind of hard to read. Uh, the first one, the five feet, is that a utility easement closest to the rear property yeah. line? Yes, that is correct. That is a utility easement, the first line at the very top. The second one, where the 132 square foot uh, wording is, that's the rear setback line. So the utility easement wraps around all three sides, and then. Yep. Yes. The, the line work is. is would, okay. It's an old subdivision. That's. That's common on that street for whatever yeah. reason. Okay. Almost all the houses. The street itself is probably not yeah. even three blocks long in standard three block configuration for the for the city, um, and that whole area is kind of kind of that way. Some elevation, some not. Yeah. Okay. So there there is no uh, other than the five foot. There's no other easements. No. Okay. That is correct. That is all there is on this property. This this owner is not encroaching onto the utility easement. Okay. Kamas, is the owner or representative online with us? Oh, we have a real one here. Good. Please introduce yourself. Hello, sir. My name is Daniel Nava. Hi, Daniel. I'm the representative of this of the owner. Okay. Do you have any questions for staff regarding what they're asking to you to do? Uh, no. Okay. Um, board, do you have any questions for him? Thank you very much. Anybody online? Star five to unmute. Once again, star five to unmute. Mr. Chair, uh, yes. the San Juan Planning Inspections, uh, just to correct you there, uh, star six. Oh, star six, yeah, star six. I've been saying that all along. No. no. I just like five today. So star six, if you are trying to unmute star six. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Etui, I apologize very much for that screw up. Star six, if you want to speak. Not hearing anybody, I'll entertain a motion to approve based upon the recommendations of staff. Move to approve. Mr. Chair, uh, if I might. I think someone raised a hand, virtual hand. Uh -oh. so I don't know if they, they want to speak. Okay. Yes. Okay, would you go ahead and introduce okay. yourself? Um, Very much. Sure. Star six, if you Hello, would you please introduce yourself? Star six again, did you hit star six? If you want us to hear you, we have to have star six, you have to hit it. She may be on another issue. Yeah, it might be on another issue, you yeah. think, maybe? Uh, the person on the phone, uh, phone number 3170926. Would you like to speak? Star six, if you want to. Okay, we're gonna move ahead since um, we can't hear, yeah. or, or there you are. Are you there? Uh, the person on the phone, uh, phone number 3170926. Yes. It's a heck of a delay. Yes. I have Mrs. Kumar on the line. Okay. Okay. At 40066 Santa Anita Drive. She may have some questions regarding this. 
Okay, and she's a resident of that neighborhood, right? Are you there? Yes, yeah, I just, this is Jean Kumar. I just want to know if there's any. Ms. Kumar, we can't, we, we lost you once again. Ms. Kumar, go ahead. Kumar, I just want to know if any encroachment will happen on my property. Okay, and she's a resident of that neighborhood. Yeah, so yeah. there is no encroachment on anybody else's property at this point. This is Jean Kumar. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Kumar, we can't, we, we lost you once again. That's a heck of a delay, guys. I t yes. Uh, okay, so you need to hang up one of the devices, please. We're, we're catching an echo, and it's interfering with your discussion, Ms. Kumar. So please, one of those devices needs to be hung up. Property at this point. This is Jane Kumar. Would it be right next to the wall or further away from there? That's a heck of a delay, guys. I, yes. Uh, okay, so you need to hang up one of the devices. Ma'am, can you mute your uh, device, please? Actually, they need to hang Go up. Go computer or turn it off and just stay on, on the phone. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma yeah, she, that's a question she has for us, Kevin. It is, there's no encroachment no. or, and it's not gonna get really any closer to the wall by a whole bunch. Feet. It's gonna be 23 feet away from the wall. 23 feet away from the wall, Ms. Kumar. Ms. Kumar? Well, it puts us in a strange position here. Probably not. Maybe. Let me make this suggestion to um, to you guys, if you will reach out to her to assure her that there's no encroachment into her property, number one, and give her the distance, if you would, um, to the to the wall. Okay. And I think it'll be important when you tell her the distance. That's the distance from that porch she's used to seeing already. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. that's an, the existing encroachment that we're legalizing. Yeah. Yes, we, we can do that, certainly. Okay. Thank you. Once again, I'll ask for, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. I have a first. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Please uh, tell your yes, owner. Thank you for that. All right. Item number four. So that's you too? Yes, that is correct. All Mr. right. Chairman. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Saul Pina again with planning and inspections. Item four on the agenda is a special exception request for the property located at 11748 at Queens Garden Circle. The applicant is requesting special exception B to legalize the extension of an open porch encroaching into the required side yard setback. Here is an aerial image of the subject property highlighted in yellow. Here we have the zoning map. The zoning district for the property is R2A residential. Here we see the site plan depicting the layout of the property. The applicant is looking to legalize a 161 square foot uh, open porch for which a portion encroaches five feet into the required five foot side, side yard setback. If approved, a 115 square foot encroachment will be permitted on the property. Here's the front view of the subject property as seen from a Queens Garden Circle. Here we have a front view of the 161 square foot open porch with the 115 square foot encroachment extending five feet into the required side yard setback. Here we see a side view of the same 115 square foot encroachment. And lastly, here's a rear view of the same 161 square foot open porch with the 115 square foot encroachment. 
Here we have an aerial image showing non-conforming properties along a Queen's Garden circle. These properties highlighted in yellow uh, have encroachments extending into the required side yard setback. Here we see an image of 11721 Queen's Garden circle. In red is an enclosed structure extending five feet into the required five foot side yard setback. And lastly, uh, here we have an image of 11769 Queen's Garden Circle. In red, it's part of a carport extending five feet into the required five foot side yard setback as well as part of uh, an enclosed uh, structure located at the rear. Notices were mailed on February 24th of the present year. The planning division did not receive any communications in support or opposition to the request. And with that, uh, staff recommends approval of the exception request as the requested encroachment is equal to the encroachments present on those non-conforming lots. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Saul. Board, any questions? Can you show the front picture again from the front of the house? I just got one question. IT, can you uh, show them my presentation? Site plan, please. There's, there's no encroachment, or and it's not going to get really any closer to the. Oh. That's way yeah. delayed, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, like we're in Ukraine or yeah, something. Yeah, but not the not the plan, but the side of the the front view for the picture. Picture of the house. There you go. The next the one. The one that you show the the actual building. There you go. Yeah. Back to what we had last week yep. is the water draining into the neighbor's yard. You all made a recommendation that they put a gutter. I have a uh, better image. Uh, let me see. So as you can see, uh, this gutter is within uh, <laughs> the property and uh, does not encroach onto uh, the neighbors. And yes. Uh, uh, this gutter uh, serves uh, for water to not run into uh, uh, the neighbor's property. So in this case, uh, the property owner does uh, have gutter, does have a gutter structure in, in, in this uh, enclosure. Good. How long has that uh, porch been up? Um, I will defer that question uh, to uh, the applicant so that they can provide an exact answer as to how many, how many okay. years has that been there. Cool. Are you the applicant, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, come on up and introduce yourself. My name is Gabriel Enriquez. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, speak English. Sorry, my English. I'm no, no, no. If myself. you need interpretation, por favor, let us know. Okay. Okay, the, that uh, uh, porch. Porch, I made out seven, six or seven years ago. Okay. But uh, yes, the, propose, the, the proposal is for uh, just enclosure my tools. I put a guard guard, water guard. The guard guard, water guard is just uh, get the, the drain for the AC because uh, the rain is for all, for all. Okay. But um, uh, I applied for a exception B for that reason. There's a lot of other neighbors. Was your current neighbor there when you built it? Yes. Yeah, you don't think nada? No, no, I got a good neighbors, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay. Any questions for him beyond that? I have a question. Um, when it comes to when it rains, uh, where does the water from the rear, the backyard go? Does it go around to the other side or? No, into my property. The gutter guard uh, got a elbow to my property. No, but in the backyard though, there's, the back there's side drainage. Uh, does, does it, typically they go around the, around the sides of the houses, uh, the backyard drainage. Okay, for the water ring? ring? Yeah, yeah. On, the, on, the, on, the, on the back. And the back, uh, well, it's, it's into the dirt, into the my house. Is it on the back, in the backyard, or on the front yard? Which no, way does it go? Yard. It drains to the front? To the front. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see your picture again, so just to make sure we're okay. IT, can you, can you please show the screen, IT? There we go. Next one. So, 
So this one is for the side. Okay, so the, the drain goes to the front, not to the back. Okay. To the front. Al frente. Okay. All right. Is that satisfied? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the owner? Anybody online to discuss this? Please hit star six. Star six to unmute yourself. If anybody has any comments for this particular case. Once again, star six, having heard none, I will entertain a motion to approve based upon the recommendations of staff. I make a motion to approve. I have a first, and I'll second that motion. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes, thank you. Make sure you get with the city staff in order to get your permits and stuff taken care of, okay? Thank you. All right, guys, we are near the end. Is there no additions, right? We're good? Okay, proof of minutes from uh, the last meeting. Have you guys had a chance to read them? And do Move I hear approve. a motion? And I've got a first. Second. Do I hear a second? Hear a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, need to let you guys know also we'll be meeting again. What's our next meeting date, Donna? Do you remember? Next, next time we call it? I think. Uh, Luis Amora with planning inspections. I believe it's on April 3rd. April 3rd, okay. Yes. Is it right after Easter? I am not sure. Okay, let's double check that just to be sure that we have enough people coming in. Okay, enough board members. So if we need to change it, please do mm -hmm. so, all right? Yes. All right, we have an adjournment. And if I may, before we adjourn. Yes. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Edwards as a new appointee to the board. Yes, Mr. Edwards, uh, who appointed you? Uh, Chris Canales, alternative. Oh, good, okay. Congratulations, welcome on board. It's an interesting board. I have a lot of characters here, mostly me. So uh, be careful with that. Uh, I'd also like to say welcome to Philip Etui. He's our director of uh, p &I, so you can raise your hand over there, Philip. Thank you very much. All right, folks, thank you for uh, being here. Well, yes, sir? Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on? Okay. Uh, we also, uh, please uh, welcome back Miss Fortune. So she was. I off. didn't know she was gone. <laughs> what happened, Janet? Did you <laughs> escape and come back? Yeah, glad to have you back. So she was reappointed. So ah. she's back. Um, also, we just confirmed Easter. It's on the 9th. So that's a week after okay. the next CBA. Okay, so we're all good. And then another quick note. Come on, three guys. What's up? Please uh, join me in congratulating uh, Nina Rodriguez. She has been promoted to senior planner. Nice. So okay. she's over there working the Way computer to go. right senior, now. Huh? Yeah. That's probably the most important message we got all night there. Congratulations <laughs> once again. Um, that, that's all I have Are right now. Are you sure? I hope so. <laughs> Listen, thank have you. a good week. Donna, thank you again for all the work that you do for us. Philip, we'll talk. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. We're adjourned. Oh, Mr. Chair, if uh -oh. we get a, a vote on adjourning. Yeah, there was a motion to adjourn, but no, vo no ah, voting. Okay. Mr. Edwards, would you lead the vote, please? You vote yes? Yes. 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 We're all good. Thank you.